Hi everyone. In this video, we're continuing on with how we represent covalently bonded species. And now we need to talk about double bonds and triple bonds. And we've talked about when you have unshared electrons that we, that we represent them as dots. And when you have a single pair of shared electrons, we represent it as a straight line. And that straight line represents a single bond. But now we need to expand that and talk about double bonds and triple bonds. So when you have more than one pair, so this is more than one pair of electrons that are shared between the same atoms in a molecule, we may get a double bond or a triple bond. And the more of these shared electron pairs that you have, the tighter it's going to hold the atoms together. And so the shorter the distance is going to be between them and the stronger they're going to be held together. So the shorter and the stronger the overall bond is. You can imagine these bonds as being sort of like the attractive forces of a rubber band. So if I have a single electron pair and it's attracting my hands together with some force, but if I have another electron pair that I'm sharing, we can think of that as another rubber band. And so obviously the attractive force is going to be greater, so the distance between my hands is going to be shorter. And then I could even go to a triple bond. So now that I've got three rubber bands, now the distance between my hands is going to be even shorter. The internuclear distance between atoms is shorter with a triple bond. And the overall attractive force and bond between them is going to be stronger because I have more of these attractions. So here are some examples. I2... molecule has a single bond between them and then the unshared electrons, valence electrons, are around them. That's for the I2 diatomic iodine element molecule. If we go to O2 oxygen gas, the neutral diatomic element oxygen, Then there's the Lewis structure for the O2 molecule. It has a double bond. So that means that it has a pair of electrons here and another pair of electrons here. And if we continue on to N2 nitrogen gas, this is the neutral diatomic molecule for the element. We see that we have a triple bond there. So two, four, six, eight electrons around that nitrogen. Two, four, six, eight electrons around that oxygen. Two, four, six, eight electrons around that iodine. And again, later we will go over how we generate these Lewis structures given the formulas. But for right now, I want to show you some examples before we dive into how we build them. This is a good point to take a moment and talk about these molecules that you see here. These are covalent molecules, but they are the covalent molecules for pure elements. Because you see that there's no other element in that molecule. These are covalently bonded species. And you notice they occur diatomically with two atoms bonded. So I'd like to take a moment to talk about that. Notice some atoms occur in nature they're more stable as diatomic molecules. So they occur in two atoms paired up in a covalent species instead of just as a single atom. So when you breathe in oxygen, this is what you're breathing in. You're not breathing in a single oxygen atom. You're breathing in a pair of them bonded covalently. There are several elements that occur naturally as diatomic molecules. So here they are. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Chlorine, 
bromine, and iodine. So we've got hydrogen gas that occurs as H2, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, which all, all of which occur as diatomic molecules. So hydrogen and then that corner from nitrogen around the corner to iodine. Some of you may have learned a memory aid in your previous class. And the memory aid is have no fear of ice cold beer. And I'm not recommending that you drink. I'm just saying that this is a memory aid that a lot of you have learned. So the first letters in each of these words, H-N-F-O-I-C-B. So H2, N2, F2, O2, I2, Cl2, and Br2. But there's also an easy way to remember them by just by looking at the periodic table. You have hydrogen and then these along the corner here from nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, okay? They occur as diatomic species. This is important to remember because later on in this course, when we are writing chemical equations for reactions, you will have to remember that the formulas for these elements are diatomic. They don't occur just as single atoms.